So welcome to the Advanced Data Trees course. We'll be looking at the art of navigating and manipulating data structures in Grasshopper. One of the most critical issues facing designers who use Grasshopper is understanding how to effectively navigate and use multidimensional data in creative ways. Effective use of data trees can not only help accelerate project development and increase productivity, but in many cases, implementing an advanced data tree strategy can lead to greater communication across a team. Through a sh series of short presentations and live case studies, learn to streamline your parametric workflows using advanced data trees strategies. Um, so, <laughs> um, I'm Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons. We are the founding partners of Mode Lab, and Mode Lab is a collective learning platform empowering creatives through education and experiences in design and technology. As a part of the uh, collective, um, we think that when learning becomes a social process, collective insight and understanding lead to intellectual, intellectual synergy. Unique perspectives, skills, and experiences yield innovation, not only for the group, but for the individual as well. So here you'll see a matrix of the um, events, people, and work that really make up uh, the lab as we see it. And um, as a part of the learning aspect of the lab, uh, we connect creatives to learning content. Uh, this course is one example of that. And our course topics are produced in an array of formats, flexible enough to meet the needs of uh, our dynamic and ever-evolving community, that's you. And so here you can see a matrix of our course catalog um, that includes courses that are um, short and online, such as this, uh, or uh, ones that are compiled as videos that you can take on your own time. And really all of that is um, uh, based upon the platform that we've developed, which is all the different ways that you can learn with us. Right? And when the obstacles of scheduling, technical proficiency, and physical location are removed, what remains is an adaptable, accessible learning platform open to creatives and the curious. Again, that's you. So here you can browse the different ways that we set up learning content uh, for you to access it. We offer courses um, such as this one on advanced data trees that are online. The duration is usually about one to three hour, hours, and um, we connect to you via the web. We also uh, conduct workshops that are here in our studio space or in pop-up event spaces um, around the globe. And these are more focused um, learning sessions where we look at a particular topic for one to three days. And we really enjoy including uh, some form of output or production within the, um, the confines of the workshop. As you can see here in this uh, thumbnail, um, we're using our CNC router that we have here in the studio. We also offer courses and uh, sorry classes and a couple of other different formats. If you were to browse to our new website, you would see this here under the platform section. And um, coming from the platform, uh, we've also included um, a matrix of the various things that have come about from uh, Mode Lab as a collective learning platform, uh, the prototypes, uh, studies, sketches, and things like that that have come out of the participation of diverse. Um, designers and uh, creatives within the context of our, our platform. So you've um, seen the old site uh, most likely and uh, you may or may not have seen the new site which was what we were just looking at um, which is at modecollective.nu um, and we'd also uh, love it if you haven't already for you to connect with us on Facebook and um, we want our social media to really empower you also and um, in that we hope that you uh, find what we share interesting as well as uh, use this as a means to connect to other people that have been participating in any of our learning experiences. So let's talk about the, um, the topics that we're going to go over today. All right, we're going to look at what is a data tree as a review. So what is it again and how does Grasshopper generate these data trees or also referred to as paths? We're also going to look at what are the best practices for creating legible data paths. Particularly, we're going to be talking about this as we develop our parametric files so that as we go, we are keeping our data paths clean and legible. And uh, we can build uh, easily from there, uh, understanding the logic that we're deploying relative to the data structure that we're using. 
Uh, we're also going to talk about how I can use uh, data trees to reorganize elements in a definition. Right? Um, if we have some, some elements that are either parametric or otherwise, how can we use the hierarchical nature of data trees to keep these things organized in a clear way? And lastly, we're also going to be talking about how else you might be able to retain parametric information beyond the confines of Grasshopper. Um, very frequently, um, we'll find the case that we want to output something uh, for fabrication or something like that. Um, we're going between applications and we need some information to go with it. So that's the last topic that we're going to be covering, covering today. Okay, so advanced data trees, uh, this is within um, the application Grasshopper, which is a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools. So as a review, um, I'm sure that you're all uh, pretty familiar with Grasshopper right now if you're taking this course, but um, just as a review, Grasshopper allows us to define logical relationships between multiple design parameters resulting in a parametric model which is just one wherein the parts of the design relate and change in a coordinated way as defined by the various parameters and dependencies stated. And of course, you are the one stating the various parameters and dependencies. So here we have um, an example of um, generating a basic shape using some driver profiles on the left, um, resulting in a surface in the middle. And um, this might be understood as a tower or something where we're slicing it up into uh, smaller parts. All right, so we have uh, a kind of parametric logic that is describing what the profile will look like, right? And these are two versions of the same parametric model. And here we have some radius values, some length values, etc. Well, what does that mean? If we're talking about logical relationships, how things are related to each other, um, very quickly we'll find ourselves needing to organize these things in a way that makes sense. So how does Grasshopper organize things? Well, it keeps a, a kind of it keeps tabs on all the different elements in your file based on a data tree, and it's, that's what the terminology is within the context of Grasshopper. Our hierarchical data structure is called a data tree. So if we take a look at what a data tree is, right? It has a collection of levels depending on how far this data tree has grown. It has um, at the um, the youngest level of the data tree, it can store data either uh, within um, as a single element or within a list of elements, right? And how we get from the uh, start of our file and the very first relationship we establish to the current uh, collection of elements that are uh, being stored is called our data path. Right, and um, there's a representation uh, within Grasshopper that looks similar to this, which we'll be talking about. And there's also a numerical representation of what the data path is that will look something like this, using curly brackets, uh, index values, separated by semicolons, closing curly brackets. So the path is what is inside the curly brackets. This is the format for describing our data tree in Grasshopper. Okay, so if we have uh, data trees, uh, what are some points of interest that we need to be keeping in mind when we work with them? Well, they store data hierarchically. Now that means that we can understand the elements within our file relative to a hierarchical system that gives more or less importance to things, or you could also think that uh, about this as like, I've done something more recently or further back in the development of my file, etc. cetera. Um, if we didn't have hierarchy, everything would be understood as the same, and that's a really challenging issue uh, relative to how we work with a software interface. So data trees also grow incrementally and linearly, right? They don't um, sprout new branches or, um, or grow additional levels unless we specifically ask them to, and they don't do that on their own. Right, so it's incremental, we build level to level to level, and it's also linear, right? We can track back through um, from the origin of our data tree all the way through to our current collection of elements and back, right? Um, each level represents some action done or a relationship established, right? So um, it's easiest to think about the difference between branch level A and branch level B, for instance, as representing some action, right? Like 
I created some points from a curve, right? That action might be the difference between A and B. We have a curve here at level A. We have some points at level B. And data trees are also malleable. That means that we can redefine them, uh, shift them around, modify them so that their structure, hierarchy, and depth have been adjusted to um, more easily produce our objectives, right? So, um, and that way they're not strict or fixed, right? But we can uh, manipulate them uh, so that we can achieve whatever we've set out to do.